Ooh, hi everyone. So I'm gonna do a random colubrid video because I am obsessed with so many interesting colubrids. And this one, you know what this one is, guys? This is the Asian keeled rat snake. So this is Pataias carinata. So this is an animal that acts like it's kind of like a boom slang, but boom slangs are from Africa and these guys are tropical Asia. But this animal tries to scare would-be predators off by acting menacing and it gets huge. So some people think this could be a king cobra, but when they're really big, I'm gonna pull out a bigger male, uh, but they, they vocalize and we all should know that uh, king cobras vocalize. Not cool. All right, so Pataias carinata. This is the tricky one. We were often, uh, we're used to seeing like Pataias mucosa, and it's a smaller one, but these guys can get over 12 foot for males. They are dimorphic, so the males get bigger. She's lovely, she's so vocal. Isn't that cold? So she's just doing this to try to scare me away. So what's tricky about Pataias carinata? Well, they're not really being bred uh, and I think it has to do with, you know, we're, we're sourcing them from the wild and actually where they come from, they're not common. They're very hard to probably find. And so even the collectors are having a hard time finding them. But, uh, one of the big problems is in the wild, they eat everything. So they're going to eat birds, but they're going to eat a lot of amphibians, frogs and stuff like that. And any animal that's eating a lot of frogs and whatnot is, uh, often going to be victim of parasites and parasites are like trematodes like liver flukes cestodes like tapeworms and a whole bunch of other horrible uh ascarids strongyles nematodes lungworms pentastoma the killer absolutely kills these guys so besides actually getting these onto a rodent and bird diet we also want to worm them and worming is very very complicated in some cases, because remember, when you worm an animal, I think it's hard to focus. When you're worming an animal, you're poisoning the animal enough to poison its parasitic load and not hopefully kill the animal. But another problem is if it has a lot of parasites spread throughout its body, these parasites, as they're dying, because often it attacks the neurological system of the parasite, or it stops the uptick of sugars or whatever, as these parasites are dying, and if they're not in the gastrointestinal system and they're in the body cavities or in their internal organs, it can actually, uh, you have all this organic material that is now present as these organisms are dying, and it can pollute the animal's body and the bloodstream. So it's really, really tricky. And also, when you worm things, you can also drive parasites crazy. So if you have parasites in the lungs or in the liver or something like that, they can go crazy. All right, we're gonna to switch to another one now. <laughs> All right, guys. See Ivan? Show, show. He's like. <laughs> oh my God, Ivan. No. Okay, so this is a larger male Pataias carinata. And Dan Mulary is pretty much the go to guy, I would say, in Pataias carinata. Dan has ridiculous uh, access to these. He knows all the ins and outs of them. I, of course, am thrilled with this species, but uh, this is a big boy, and this isn't even that big, but this is, you know, he's easily over 10 foot, and uh, I'd like to actually be able to breed these, and I think captive-born ones of these is very important. So remember, as a, as a reptile keeper and a breeder, in my position, you know, I've bred so many different reptiles, but I think what we want to do is we want to get something that's rare, that's elusive, that doesn't generally do well as an import, and we want to acclimate them, and we want to bring them into the hobbyist sector, and we want to reproduce and make captive-born babies. Those captive-born babies, first-generation animals are going to do far better than these animals that have been removed from the wild and you know, only some of them are going to live because they don't want to eat. So getting this thing onto rodents is, is a big trick. But uh, initially what they want to eat is uh, things like frog legs, frogs. But of course, I'm not going to feed frogs because my, frogs are a great intermediary host to parasites. 
And that's a big problem. So when you are buying things like Kribos and Pataias and all of these tropical rat snakes out of the wild, and they're just out of the wild and they haven't been wormed, you're going to need to investigate worming them. I think a lot of times for long-term success, you're going to want to do that. But a really cool species, uh, the, the, these guys are largely arboreal, they're terrestrial and arboreal. They're secretive, they like to come out at night, it seems. Very, very nervous around us. But like anything, they're, you know, they can be uh, acclimated to knowing who you are and, and actually can be quite tractable. He's not biting or anything like that. They have a massive long tongue too. He doesn't vocalize like the female. I could show some smaller ones. There's all different color morphs of these, which is really, really cool. And uh, so the temperatures with these guys, typical uh, 80, 82 for ambient temperatures, hot spot about 92, 94, lots of hides, whatever. Right now, you know, my group, I'm going through acclimation of these, getting them so they're reliable eaters, long-term uh, worming, but uh, really cool species. Okay. okay. All right, guys. What is this ridiculously cool colubrid that is often unknown? This is a really interesting animal. So this animal is from Madagascar. And this is Madagascar hognose. This is Lyoheterodon. I really like Lyoheterodon. We have a clutch of eggs incubating right now. I'm doing a breeding situation with my friend over the Reptile Basics, Rich. And these guys can get really big. I have a monstrous male that eats everything. Uh, really stout, interesting colubrid that, once again, I think it's overlooked. It's it's not known well. And uh, captive-born babies are definitely something I want to do. But what's really cool is this little peach coloration under the throat. Uh, they can be really, really sweet. They don't have as much of an upturned nose as let's say our Western or Eastern hog nose snakes. But what's really cool about these, they readily eat rodents and they get big around and they, they're like keeled like uh, the Carinatas, like the king, king rats. And uh, if you look at that, it almost looks like it's a Carinata, which I have those too. Those are really cool. But I really like this snake. Uh, very easy to keep down towards the tail, they're almost black and white, pretty, pretty keeled, really, really good species uh, that I think that has not seen its day in the limelight, but uh, right now, this is the limelight, we're trying to show it off, hi, look at that, isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, here's one that uh, people are keeping and actually breeding these. This is the king rat. So this is uh, the stink snake, the Chinese king rat snake. I have some really stink? nice ones. Yeah, they can, they can uh, when they get scared, their musk gland is something. But look at that. That's just the head. Uh, I have some really, really big ones of this. I have albino too. This is more like the black and yellow. I have two black and yellow females. You're just not cooperating. Look at that. Can you zero in that face? Oh yeah, I did. Very, very powerful animal. He's just giving me a <laughs> heck of a time. Uh, very easy to keep. So you know what's interesting about these, and it was really surprising to me, is they farm these for their organs. Actually, mostly that I know is gallbladders. So in medicinal, uh, Asian medicinal things like, you know, Chinese medicinal ideas, the gallbladder with let's say rice, wine, sake, something like that has some kind of medicinal purpose. So what they do is they'll raise these guys up. They're breeding thousands and thousands of these, and then they remove the gallbladder and you can remove the gallbladder from this animal. They know right where it is and you can incise or excise right between the scales and you can remove its gallbladder. You can catch it with a hook, pull it out. You can clamp it off. You can uh, snip the gallbladder out of there and you wouldn't even know that, but the gallbladder is pretty much uh, essential for uh, releasing like uh, enzymes for digestion and whatever. So I think what happens is these animals long-term 
don't do well when they don't have a gallbladder, but you often can't even tell it. But now we have lots of captive red ones. He doesn't want to cooperate. It's very pretty. Cool? They get big, yeah. big and thick and solid. And they're very, very coarse for the scalation. <laughs> but very, very sweet. So you know what it's like? It's kind of like, um, a lot like a, like a, a pituophis, so pine snakes, there you go. Like once again, like I don't, I don't want to say like. So once again, we're talking about interesting colubrids, uh, ones that we don't often see as much. And I think right now these are just they're just starting to uh, pick up appreciation. And I certainly appreciate them, and I want other people to realize them because there's there's obviously more than just boas and ball pythons and retics. Certainly not about ball pythons. We all love those. But there's some amazing, amazing colubrids. And one thing that's really great, they have wonderful minds. They just have little, little brains. They have a lot of personality. And I find uh, a strong interest in them. And there's just, I just want to breed so many of these. Good. Okay. Okay. What's this one? So, guys, what is this weird South American snake? This is the dreaded false water cobra. Really uh, interesting colubrid. Uh, they can flatten themselves out so when they're threatened they act like a cobra even though there's no cobras where they come from. But this is all just uh, threat displays. She's not too interested in you know acting tough around me. Uh, very fast metabolism. Ravenous eaters. So a lot of people that have amazing false water cobras there's all different uh, color phases and whatnot. I tend to just keep, uh, just believe it or not, just keep like the normals. Uh, just like I have like two different, like the hypo and just the normal. And uh, they're definitely a very interesting species. Uh, I find them to be quite tractable. She's super sweet. She's a mommy. She just, she laid some eggs. I'll go pull out some eggs and show you what they look like. But, uh, Really, really nice. She's yeah, you're missing the tip of your tail a little bit. It's like a hand-me-down snake. The snake has been through. I like playing with your tail. Hey guys, did you know that actually she's shedding? Do you know that when a snake is shedding, and if you make sure that there's no skin left on the tail, that's a really good thing. Sometimes snakes will shed and they'll leave the remaining little bit of skin on their tail, and that will cinch the tail and stop blood flow and it will actually cause that part of the tail to die wherever it cinches so if your snake is shedding and you see the shed on the tip of the tail with great care remove that bit of skin she's shedding right now so actually i did something that normally it's actually okay but you don't want to prematurely shed a snake because if you still feel like the sticky lymph kind of feel don't mess with it because that actually means that the underlying uh, skin is still trying to develop and whatnot. But you want to make sure that you don't have any dead skin on there. I've actually seen multiple snakes where the tip of the tail dies. And you do not want that. But a wonderful animal. Uh, so she's opaque right now. She's, she's just getting ready to shed. So even opaque, she's still, I think she's quite fancy looking. Yeah, I like to play with snakes. <laughs> he has lost the will to live. His daddy's getting all the attention. No. That's I've been terrible. Like, okay, eggs. Let's take a look at some eggs. water cobra eggs or some mango snake eggs in there too but that's false water cobra um incubation temperature 82 degrees actually could probably even be 
79 to 82. And that's some mangrove eggs and some mangrove eggs. A lot of mangrove snakes, at least for me, are laying really small clutches. But back to these. So this was her clutch. She laid these earlier this month. So it's a nice looking clutch. I am not super experienced in the breeding of false water cobras. So I am just like anybody else. I'm just a, a fan that just happens to keep a bunch. But now, as you know, as I start looking at some overlooked projects, I'm just starting to be a directing my attention and my interest and in stuff like this. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to show you a trick. So it could be green tree python eggs, whatever. What I like to do is to take one container with uh, hatch right. So hatch right is water crystals and perlite. Then I put a layer of moss and then I will float this into another bin. There's a couple air holes and I put a lid on here. You can actually just leave it loose. And then you put another lid on that. And what that's doing is it's creating a humid chamber. And the trick with eggs is you want to maintain a constant humidity. And the eggs will take as they need. So these are a little bit dented in. I actually really like that. It's much better to have an egg that's uh, a little bit on the dry side than something that's too wet. Because too wet, they die. Uh, and it's, you know, you can't really save it. An egg that's starting to dry out, there's a way better chance of saving it. But this kind of thing works really well and the eggs will pull from the uh, humidity, the moisture in the air, and then they'll, you know, render whatever they need for moisture. All right, enough of that. All right, guys, we'll end this with little grumpy pants right here. This is another Pataias carinata. This is all black. So my other ones I was showing you are blue and then I have some ones that have some striping. This one I thought was really cool because it actually looks like it's a black racer. Almost. Big giant eyes, super uh, wonderful brain, big long tongue, uh, very much an active hunter, and a really interesting species. Some people think it looks like a boom sign. Yeah, it does. My, my a female I showed in the beginning, she really does. But you can win these guys over. And uh, I'm very much into touch guys. So just touching and people talking in the background make me want to ring a ding ding their necks. So anyways, uh, hope, hopefully you actually like this video. Once again, it's bubblegum, but I wanna show you some cool stuff. I'm gonna do more things. I have some people asking for Tegu videos, maybe talking about uh, socialization of different lizards like rhino iguanas and whatever. So yes, you guys are on my hit list. I'm thinking about it, so I think maybe the next video won't be a Tegu video. But uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Please subscribe to my channel, guys. I need, <laughs> I need to be noticed. I need to feel love. I need to feel something. Otherwise, I'm just gonna like fade away into the night. You guys are awesome. Please give me your comments. Tell me what you guys are actually thinking of my content. And I appreciate you guys. You're really awesome.